Hi guys, Sean here from DigiDirect. Today, we're gonna to be checking out the recently released Panasonic G9. Now, the G9 shares the flagship title in Panasonic's lineup along with the GH5, um, but while the GH5 and the GH5S are aimed uh, at video more so, this is aimed more at a stills audience. So there's a, lot of, a couple differences here between the GH5 and the G9. Uh, it's like a high res mode, uh, burst shooting speeds and so on. We're gonna go through all of those, but we'll start with a look at the body of the G9. So the G9 looks quite similar to the GH5, but there are some differences. Like the GH5, it's a fully weather-sealed body with a fully articulating touchscreen, and it has dual UHS-2 compatible SD card slots. It has the same joystick as the GH5, which is great because this is a really well-designed joystick. Uh, it's perfectly placed, and it really speeds up both menu navigation and changing your AF points, so I'm glad to see that on here. There's also a mic and headphone jack. There's a full-size HDMI and full-size USB port on here. And you can also supply power to the camera via the USB port, which is a new feature. One thing that is noticeable here on the back is the size of the viewfinder. That's really large. It does have the same resolution as the GH5's viewfinder, which is 3.68 million dots, but it increases the magnification to 0.83 times, which makes it feel really cavernous when using it. You can even adjust the magnification uh, a little bit as well if you're wearing glasses and so on. Definitely a high point of the physical de design of this camera. Also new is this LCD screen on top here. And it may sound weird that I'm calling that new because that's something that we've seen on DSLRs for age ages, but most mirrorless cameras don't have this. If you're coming from a DSLR, which is uh, an audience that Panasonic is obviously trying to court here with the G9, this is gonna feel very familiar and comforting and make that transition a little bit easier. So you may find it very useful. Panasonic has also covered the G9 in customizable function buttons, like most of their cameras, um, but there's even a, an extra uh, function switch here that will change between banks of function options, so it's even a little bit more customizable than the GH5. So under the hood, the G9 has the same 20 megapixel sensor with no low pass filter that we saw on the GH5. Now 20 megapixels is a pretty good place to be. We've started to see in the last year or so uh, Micro Four Thirds cameras jumping from 16 to 20 megapixels. It's still a little bit less than you might find in a DSLR, for example, of the, uh, the same similar price point. But now 20 megapixels is pretty good resolution for anyone who's not looking for specifically a super high resolution uh, sensor. So I think it's gonna be fine for most people. And if you are looking for very high resolution, they have added on the G9 a new high res mode. Now this is similar to uh, a mode that Olympus has had in their cameras for a little while, where it, uh, the sensor, the camera takes eight photos, shifting the sensor by half a pixel between each photo, giving and then blends it together, resulting in an 80 megapixel raw or JPEG image. So you can get those really high resolution shots if you need them. Obviously, since it's taking a series of photos, it has to be on a tripod and you have to have a static subject, so it's not gonna work in every situation. But if you do need those high resolution shots, you can get them on the G9 using that mode. They've also improved the in-body image stabilization on the G9. On the GH5, that was five and a half stops when used with the compatible dual IS2 Panasonic lens. On the G9 here, that's boosted up to six and a half stops, which is really good, especially considering they just announced the GH5S, which definitely took some flack because it didn't have in-body image stabilization. So they boosted that up on the G9 here. Six and a half stops is quite a lot. Here's a shot where I'm shooting at 100 millimeters uh, on a Micro Four Thirds lens, which means that it's 200 millimeter equivalent uh, in full frame focal length terms. That's quite steady considering the length of the, uh, the lens here. And that's handheld, I should obviously say. Um, so very good image stabilization, especially when we consider that the G9 has a lot of these burst shooting modes that make it more applicable to sports and action shooting where you might have a longer lens. Image stabilization is gonna do a lot more for you on these longer lenses, so it's very good to see that they've got a very well implemented IS system in here on the G9. So let's talk about some of those burst shooting modes. And here's where we're gonna see the G9 start to dif differentiate itself from the GH5 with that added focus on stills. So the G9 can shoot at up to 20 frames per second with continuous autofocus or up to 60 frames per second with fixed autofocus. That's super fast. 60 frames per second is probably faster than you're ever gonna need. And 20 frames per second with continuous autofocus is great. And that is the full shoot when you're shooting full 20 megapixel raw photos. So very, very fast shooting options here. Great for anything with movement like sports or wildlife as I touched on earlier already. It also has a buffer of about 60 raw photos. So if, depending on how fast you're shooting, you know, if you're shooting at 60 frames per second, that's only gonna be about one second. But if you're shooting at a lower speed than that, that's gonna extend out the, uh, the length a little bit longer. 
you also have uh, a new uh, pre-burst option here where if you're holding down the, the, bu uh, the shutter button halfway, it's gonna continually buffer and save the last half second of shots. So if you're a little bit late to, to press the shutter button for some kind of action, you've got a half second leeway beforehand so you can hopefully grab what you may have missed if it didn't have that feature. Now, in addition to all of those, they also have the 6K and 4K photo modes that we've seen on some other Panasonic cameras. These essentially shoot video and let you pull stills from the video. So 6K can shoot up to uh, 30 frames per second, which lets you pull an 18 megapixel JPEG, and 4K photo can shoot up to 60 frames per second, which lets you pull an eight megapixel JPEG. So obviously these are not the full 20 megapixel resolution and their JPEG's not RAWs, so there's a bit of a trade-off there. But the advantage of doing this is that you have basically an indefinite buffer. You can just do this continuously. You're not gonna run out after 60 frames or, or so on. You also can get a one second buffer on either side of pressing the shutter button as well if you do that. So between that 6K, 4K, photo mode and the standard burst shooting options, you definitely have your options available to you to capturing uh, high action type subjects. Now all of that burst shooting capability is dependent on the AF system being able to keep up. And Panasonic has taken some flack recently for their AF systems, particularly the system on the GH5 and its continuous autofocus. Uh, and we do have the same 225 point DFD AF system in the G9 as was on the GH5. So for single point autofocus, I think it's excellent. It's fast, it's snappy, it's very intelligent about picking up the right, uh, the right subject in a busy frame. No complaints here at all. For continuous autofocus, which is where you'll see a lot of the complaints online come from, I think it's still pretty good. I think it does a good job at tracking the subject. Occasionally it will miss a frame here or there or, or point at the wrong, the, the wrong subject. Um, but overall, it's quite good. Um, I think a lot of the complaints people have had online about the GH5 tend to be auto, uh, continuous autofocus for video, and I think the system performs a lot better for stills than it does for video. Uh, so I just want to make it clear that it's not a perfect continuous autofocus system, but I don't think it's as bad as you might get the impression if you look at some of the videos online. Um, it, it definitely is not quite up to the, uh, the market leading performance that we've seen in recent months, namely from the Nikon D850 and the Sony A9, which have blazing fast and really accurate continuous autofocus systems. But both of those cameras are well over double the price of the G9. So for the price point of this camera, I think it does a good job at autofocus, both single focus and continuous autofocus. I think it'll be uh, fine for the majority of the people who are using it. Lastly, let's touch on video capability for the G9. And while it's not quite as impressively spec as the GH5, uh, it still uh, beats out most of the competition in the market in terms of video. So the camera can shoot 4K footage at up to 60 frames per second. So you can shoot 4K footage in slow motion, which is something that most cameras on the market can't do yet. It can shoot 1080p footage at up to 180 frames per second. So slower than most cameras can. So you can get really, really nice, very slow motion footage out of it, which is great. Um, the differences that it has from the GH5 is that the G9 can only shoot 8-bit color. The GH5 can shoot up to 10-bit color, which is something that you may use if you're doing heavy post-production work on your, your footage. Uh, and the G9 has a record limit of 29 minutes, whereas the GH5 has no record limit. You could record until the battery dies or the card fills up. Um, but if the GH5 and the GH5S didn't exist, the G9 would still be one of the best spec video cameras on the market. So if you're someone who has a stills focus but still wants to be able to shoot really high quality video on this camera, the G9 can absolutely deliver in that area. So overall, I think the G9 is a strong addition to the Panasonic lineup. It gives them a camera that has the stills capabilities that can finally start to lure over some of those more serious still shooters. The GH5 is a great camera, but it's definitely always been more for video and had a bit of a weakness in photos. The G9, I think, is a much more well-rounded camera for someone who wants to take serious photography as well as videos. Standout features on the camera are the overall build quality, the excellent viewfinder here, the in-body image stabilization, the high burst shooting options, and the video capabilities. And while the AF system is not absolutely market leading in its performance, it's still very good. I think it does a good job, especially considering the price point of this camera. I think it's gonna satisfy most people who have this camera. Now the G9 has just been released. Uh, you can come into one of our stores if you'd like to test it out. We've got stores in the Sydney CBD, Bondi Junction, Miranda, Chatswood, the Brisbane and Melbourne CBD, and Cannington, Western Australia. You can also order the Panasonic G9 on our website at www.digidirect.com.au. Thanks guys, take care.